join me on a watercolour journey where I'll show you how to paint these lovely wildflowers using a very special set of watercolour paints from my friends at Deep Deep Light. Let's make a start. Welcome to the Wonders of Watercolour where today we're going to be painting these pretty wildflowers. I've already drawn out the outline as you can see here. It does take a little bit of time so I do that in readiness but if you want to join in with our tutorials we provide you with a free traceable. This is the digital version for my patrons but I give you a pencil version of this so you can trace it down. All you need to do is scribble on the back and just get a pencil and outline it this way. I'll tell you how you can have access to the free version of this as well as the reference that I'm working from later on in the video. So do stay tuned for that. Let me talk to you a little bit today about the materials that I'm using. My lovely friends over at Deep Deep Light have kindly gifted me these paints. I have used them before in my videos and I'm so happy with them. Now these paints are really, really special. They're handmade, but if you do want to join in, you can use, of course, whichever colors that you want to, but I did want to showcase these paints to you today. I'll talk to you about them in more detail in a minute. Let's quickly talk about the other materials though. The paper that I'm using is a rough surface paper by Arches. It's a 300 GSM cotton. The brushes I'm using are a number eight and a number four. The number four is a very, very stubby brush. Um, these are from my own set, which I will link in the description box underneath this video. Okay, let's talk about the magical colours that we're going to be using to paint this. The colours are from Deep Deep Light and I've swatched out my colours here to help me identify the colours that are in the tins. Now I highly recommend that you do this to any paints that you've got because it does make colour matching really easy. I have done a separate video on how I match my colours and swatch them out which I will put on the top of the screen so that if you want to make one yourself you can do that. It does make the identification of them a lot easier, okay. When Deep Deep Light sent me these paints I was really drawn to these colours here. We have Ruta's Dream, Bramble Jam and Reed Buff. Now these colours are really muted and soft and just really really magical. They are granulating colours, these two here. Can you see the different pigments in those? It kind of starts off as a purpley colour and then you've got these beautiful granulating pink tones. So this particular composition really jumped out at me, so I wanted to paint it. So we're going to use Ruta's Dream. The colours that I've got on the little tin here, you'll notice something rather special. This is Ruta's Dream when it's swatched out and this is it in the, in the palette here. Look at the difference in colour. You'll see how it varies from this kind of purpley, dark purpley dusky tone and it looks green in there. It's almost magical. If you want to join in, you can use alternatives, which I'll give you as we work through the tutorial. But if you did want to purchase Deep Deep Light, I have a 10% code, which I will put in the description box, where you can grab yourself some of these rather special handmade paints um, for a discounted price. But I'll put all that information in the description box, along with all the other materials that I'm going to be using today. Okay, so these are the colors that I've chosen. I'm just gonna really quickly give you some alternatives so that you can work with me. For this color here, Ruta's Dream, if you've got something like a dusky rose, from Rembrandt that would work, or even like a Perillion Violet that would do. Bramble Jam, I mean, there isn't anything quite like it, but I would say you could use instead an indigo color mixed with a little bit of perhaps um, permanent rose. For Reed Buff, you could swap it out with maybe something like a buff titanium. You can see the colors are mixed together here, how beautiful they look. So that's kind of the, the look that I'm going for. Now, the ladies at Deep Deep Light do say to wake up the paints with a drop of water. So if you are going to treat yourself to any of these colors, what they recommend is you spritz them with water just to reactivate them. I'm used to working with paints that are slightly more solid in the pans, but I'm not, so I'm not going to do that and I'm going to use the lid that they come with as a little palette to mix my colours. I have a clean glass of water here, so we're going to start by applying our first wash. I'm going to add a few little drops of water so that I can mix my paint, and I'm going to start with my number eight round brush. I'm going to begin by mixing this rather magical Ruta's Dream. So we can pick this up. You'll notice how green it is when you start to mix it. And I'm going to do a really, really watery mix of this to start with. So we want this to be really, really loose and watery. With my brush, I'm going to take the water over these flower heads. So notice how I'm using the tip of the brush just to put it into these little curves here. When you trace down your line drawing, make sure that you keep the lines nice and clean. You don't want any sketchy sort of rough edges. The purpose of doing the pencil drawing first is just to guide you where you're going to drop that paint. So just pick up the water from the palette, 
That way you have better control of your paint and we can just put this in. These paints are handmade by two lovely ladies in Latvia and I'm going to talk to you about them in a little bit more detail as we work through this tutorial in case you want to treat yourself to these beautiful colours. And they really are exceptionally good performers. I really, really love them. Deep Deep Light um, were kind enough to send me a set earlier in the year and I fell in love with them. So if you do want to grab yourself a set of these, go ahead. Right, so right into the pencil lines. I'm not going to do this one because obviously it's a different colour. So we're going to let that settle into the paper just for a moment. This paper is rough surface, it's 100% cotton, so it is quite absorbent. So we're just going to give that a little minute to settle in. I'm still just using my number eight round brush because of this lovely fine point that I've got on it. It does mean that I'm able to go in all the little nooks and crannies with my brush. So if you've got a brush with a fine tip, you just want to sort of push it into these little spiky areas of these plants. Now, forgive me for not knowing what these are called. Um, I know this is the cosmos on the end here that's kind of folded over. I don't know the name of these, so if you do know what they're called, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be really interested to find out. I couldn't find out what they were called. I actually found them in my local garden centre, sort of in the wildflower area, so that, I don't know what they're called. So you can see how this is kind of granulating on the palette here. It, you need to just mix it up a little bit to get that colour activated and just drop it in. Really, really simple. Just drop it in. You can see how it starts off as this kind of bluey tone, almost like a grey green colour compared to the dry down version that we've got on there. As it dries and separates, it becomes a different colour. So I'm just going to use the tip of my brush to push this into the little spikes that we've got. Not too fussy, this is kind of meant to be a really casual painting. Over here on the Wonders of Watercolour, we upload new content every Tuesday. So if you're interested in learning how to paint, as you paint, you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that little bell on the side there. That way you'll be notified every time I upload new content and you won't miss out on learning how to paint. At this point, I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit more of that colour and I'm just going to dot it in between. Just let it do its thing. Nothing too fussy here. We're just going to let that do the work for us. Cleaning my brush, patting it on the kitchen paper. It's really important that you remember to pat your brush because otherwise the water will run down the ferrule of the brush and you'll have too much pigment on your bristle. So again, what you're going to do is just pat this out and just let that do its thing. So you can take this colour right into the spikes if you want to. Nice and easy. So I'm just using the tip of my number eight brush here. And I'll also give you the reference photograph to work for. So I'm using the tip of the brush here and I'm wiggling it into that pencil line and it's releasing that paint from the brush like this. So just tap the brush into the paper and because the paper is still damp, you'll see how it releases into that paper there, like this. So we'll do it again, straight from the brush, straight from the palette and just drop it in. And let it do the work for you. You can see how it just pulls that paint into the damp paper really really easy to do. Don't worry about the detail in the flower heads themselves because we can put that in later. Remember watercolour is all about building up your layers so we put layer one on and then layer two and so on and so forth and our paintings won't look overworked because the layers are so weak and watery as we work through. So that's our first kind of layer on these little flowers. Just taking a little bit from the palette there and letting it drop in. 
I am going to use a tiny bit of another green colour because I do feel it needs something. I have a colour called Bent Grass which is at the top. This is a kind of like an olive green colour and I'm going to use this to start outlining my stems and my leaves while I'm waiting for that to dry. This brush has a really fine point. I'll show it to you in a moment. So we've got a lovely fine point on the bottom there. So with this brush directly onto the paper, I'm going to mix some of that colour. So any kind of um, green tone that you've got, something that's quite muted though, something like an olive green or any of that kind of muted green tone, what you could do is you could mix an olive green tone with a little bit of a red. I'm going to let this bleed into that colour because I want that kind of natural look. And straight onto the paper with this brush. Wet on dry, taking it to the flower there because I don't mind if it bleeds into it. I'm going to take this flat colour all over the leaves here. So I'm going to speed this bit up for you. So I've taken a layer of bent grass all over the stems there. Now if you're super vigilant, you may have noticed that I accidentally went outside the pencil line there. I'm using the blender brush for my kit. This is a kind of modified filbert brush. We've got a curved edge on the end there. It's a little bit more sturdy than a watercolour brush and I'm using this to get rid of any errors. So where I've gone outside the pencil line there, I'm just going to wiggle that brush and just with a little bit of pressure there, it removes any errors like that. You can also use a brush like this to lift out any shapes if you want to. So you can use it to do a sort of negative space if you want to lift out any veins or anything like that. Super easy to do. Okay, so this is the blender brush. Where I've got this line coming down some of these curly leaves, you can just take that brush and just go around that little pencil line there to create that negative space again, if you want to do that. Okay, because this is a nice relaxed painting, okay? So that's just the blender brush right. there. So we need to just have a look at the other little flower that we've got here. So for this daisy, I'm not going to go true to the photo again. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that reed buff that I mentioned earlier on at the start, and just gonna take this all over. I want this to be a kind of, um, it, it has a kind of gnarled look in the photo, so I'm just going to use a little bit of the reed buff here to go over the first wash. I'm going to take it right onto the paper, wet on dry this time. This is my number eight round. So any brush that you've got with a nice tip that goes into the little crevices of the paper. So we've got our first wash on now. We need to think about building up these colours, okay? So the next colour that I'm going to mix up, this time using my number four brush, is Bramble Jam, another delightful colour from Deep Deep Light. So Bramble is this beautiful blue tone with these hints of pink. You could use an indigo if you wanted to use an alternative. If you did want to go ahead and buy them, I'll put a link in the description where you will have a discount link for 10% um, off these wonderful paints. They are a treat. I promise you, you'll love them. They are kind of semi-dry now, so what I'm gonna do is kind of work around one or two of these little spikes that we've got. So just put that darker value in, just to create the illusion of a little bit of death. I'm not being too fussy. We have got some pencil lines there if you want to follow those. Sort of just creating these little shapes like that. Once you've applied your color, clean it in a little puddle of water that you've got on your palette there, pat that brush, and then just using that brush to wiggle that colour and just spread it around. And you can create shapes as you go, working around these negative spaces. Clean your brush, pat it dry, and I, have, I think I've probably got the most tiniest bottle, puddle of water on my palette there. So just work that around, and you've got this nice kind of blurry look within that flower. You can now go in and work around some of these little folds that we put in earlier on. Working around some of the pencil lines. If your pencil lines are not visible, don't worry, you can wing it, you can just put them in, creating these kind of V shapes. Picking up some more of that bramble. You don't have to follow the pattern that you've got there. Remember the, the line drawing is there just to guide you. And you can push it into the tips again so that that color is varied. You've got the initial wash down and you can still see that lovely color of Ruta's Dream underneath. And now you're just blending them together with that brush, pushing the colors into the tip 
to create this lovely loose style floaty painting. These colours work so well together. At the start of the video I mentioned that you can have access to a pencil drawing to trace down as well as the reference photo and if you want to have access to those all you need to do is stay right until the end of this video where I'll place it after the outro so all you need to do is pause the video screenshot them and then you can print it out that way or you can join our Facebook group it's also called the wonders of watercolor where you can have access to all of our drawings that are here on YouTube for absolutely free so all you need to do is head over to our Facebook group and join us over there if you are worried about Facebook, don't be. We are a fantastic community over there. A fantastic team of admin and moderators that keep the group nice and safe and give fantastic advice. So do consider joining us over there. Wonders of Watercolour, which I will link in the description box. And that way you can have access to all of our tutorial photographs and references. And also you can paint your finished paintings from our tutorials over there and have some feedback from our fantastic group members as well as my admin team. So join us at The Wonders of Watercolour and I will link it in the description box underneath this video for you to check it out. I've added those colours there just with that motion that I've done with that little, by doing these V motions, cleaning my brush in the little puddle of water and then just using my number four brush, which is the stubby number four from my own set and just to blend that up. Notice how I'm using the brush to push that colour into the little spikes, cleaning my brush in the puddle of water, patting it dry and then with that damp brush I can manipulate that paint into the areas that I want it to go, keeping some of that negative space to create these lovely loose shapes. Now at the beginning of this video I mentioned that these, gift, these paints were kindly gifted to me from the lovely ladies at Deep Deep Light. I absolutely adore these paints and fell in love with them when they sent them to me earlier this year, so let's just take a little moment to check them out. So you can see how beautiful they are and like I said I have a discount code which I will put in the description box so that if you did want to treat yourself then you can check it out and have a little bit of money off. Okay so just doing the same thing I'm just literally now throwing this paint onto the paper you can see how I'm just doing these random shapes cleaning my brush patting it dry and then just using the, the damp brush to create these lovely sort of wiggly shapes leaving some negative space so you want to still see that colour underneath using the tip of the brush, wiggling it around same here, pat the brush dry and then just use that damp brush to just pull that paint so that we've got that darker value showing underneath nice and loose we need to do some work on these stems though I think so these are not botanical paintings, these are just a lovely loose kind of style painting to enjoy the painting process. I would say it's suitable for beginners or maybe if you're a little bit advanced or if you want a quick project to do then this is something that you can relax and paint along with. If you're the kind of person that prefers something a little bit more detailed, maybe you really enjoy botanical painting and want a more in-depth tutorial, we do have a Patreon where we upload new content every month, um, full length botanical painting tutorials there. They won't be on YouTube, they are exclusive to my patrons, they are a much slower pace and they are of course ad free. Now if that's something that interests you, we have we upload every month. We also have a mentorship level, so if you want a little bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, you might want to check us out over there depending on your membership level. And in case that's of interest to you, let's just take a look. Are you an aspiring artist looking to take your skills to the next level? Or perhaps you're looking for fresh inspiration? Then you may want to consider joining our Patreon. Our Patreon tutorials have much more in-depth instructions and are a much slower pace and depending on the membership level you choose, you can have personalised feedback from me and video calls.
Unlike our YouTube tutorials, our Patreon art classes focus on really learning the art of botanical painting and I will guide you step by step through the technique and skills you will need to learn and improve your botanical art. All of our Patreon tutorials are exclusive to my patrons and you won't find them on YouTube. So why not join up to our Patreon and start creating botanical art you can be truly proud of. You can join Patreon and leave it at any time, so I will link it in the description box in case that's of interest to you. You can see I'm still using these two colours that I used at the start, and same over here. So I'm taking the two colours and I'm just outlining one or two of the little spikes. This is going back to Ruta's Dream. You'll see how green it looks, that application. Um, we just want them to look a little bit textured. So I'm just using that kind of patting motion to pull it around along with that bramble. Bramble jam, and you can outline some of the details like this. So as I said, I'll put the line drawing and reference photograph um, right at the end. So you'll have a pencil outline if you're not a patron. Patrons, you'll have the digital version like this over on your Patreon feed when we launch every week, okay? So just so you know, just for transparency, you see this is dry now, so I'm just working around one of those little spikes that I painted in. So we negatively paint around. So negative painting is when we paint around a shape to create a shape, just like that, nice and easy. We need to take a look at this one here. I'm going back to the reed buff, this lovely kind of, I don't know what, I haven't seen a color. It's kind of in the realms of maybe, um, buff titanium. So if you've got a buff titanium you could use that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that settle in with, I'm going to put a tiny bit of another colour actually, any yellow colour that you have. This is one, this one's really special, this one's called golden gold, golden gold ochre. This has particles of almost um, like a shiny, it's not metallic as such but it has got a little bit of a glow to it. You could use yellow ochre for this as, a, as an alternative. So I just wanted to get that into the middle of that plant there. And while it's still wet, I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of any one of the colors I've just used, either Bramble Jam or the Rooter's Dream. And I'm just going to use the tip of my brush just to drop that in the bottom part of that while it's still wet to create a little bit of a shadow. Going back to the Reed Buff, mixing it with a tiny bit of that, to create this slightly darker colour and now I'm going to use this to create a little bit of form. So we've created like a, a darker colour here. I'm going straight on with my number four brush, the one with a nice point and I'm just taking it over some of these areas here, leaving negative space like that. So we want this to have a nice kind of bit of shading. Cleaning my brush and my rather muddy bit of water there with this dry brush I'm now going to wiggle that out to blend it up. Same thing here, nice and easy. Super easy, super fast. Same one here, just using that darker colour to create a little bit of form. And same one here. So we've got these darker lines coming up from the base. Remember this is just a super relaxed painting and stress-free. I want everybody to be able to join in with, the, with our tutorials here on our YouTube channel, The Wonders of Watercolour. We're all about learning to paint as you paint. What do I mean by that? I'm a firm believer that all things like colour like color mixing and colour theory have their place, but it isn't something that I have ever found that easy to do. And because I, I'm a very visual learner and I like to kind of see what I'm doing. So by learn to paint as you paint, what I mean is you're painting along with me and you're actually learning probably without realizing it. So learn to paint as you paint just simply means that you're learning to paint as you paint. So by joining in with our tutorials here and following my steps, you are learning as you go. I'm going to take a tiny bit more of that golden gold ochre, uh, mix it in with a bit of darker color there and I'm just gonna add a few dots the center of this. Rooter's Dream and with a little bit of the green color that we use. So we've got Rooter's Dream, Bent Grass and Reed Buff mixed together. Remember how I showed you at the start the swatch card how beautiful colors look mixed in. So we've now got to add a little bit of detail to some of the um, some of the leaves that we've got on here. So with this color if you've got any green tone you could use that. Just going to let that be applied like that. Clean my brush, pat it dry. With this damp brush all I'm doing is I'm softening that outside edge 
and I'm blending it into that first wash. So you can still see that colour underneath and we've added a little bit of detail. We don't have to do this to all of them, but I think it looks rather nice if we put it on certain areas. So for example, the outside of this edge here, we can have a darker value on the outside of that stem. So we're just going to have a nice relaxed painting today. And then with that damp brush, you want to be pushing it into the outside edge. So that we've got that variation of colour. I'm going to do it to a few more of them. Where I've pulled out that colour earlier on, where we did that lift out, you can now use this colour to work around that vein if you want to. Depends on how, how realistic you want to be. But just to show you, you can paint around that vein. Same here, you can go around and create. You can really enhance that negative shape that you pulled out, okay? It's all about learning and managing your paint and knowing how to apply it as you work through. You see this brush holds quite a lot of paint. I haven't gone back to my palette yet to replace that colour. I designed this brush with um, this kind of painting in mind. I wanted it to be nice and stubby so that we could get enough paint on there without having to replenish that paint. So check them out. I'll put them in the description underneath if you want to have a look at those. This one here, I'm going to add a little bit more detail. So any green colour that you have, you could use for this. Just by adding the colour like this straight onto the paper, wet on dry. And you can add a little bit more depth of colour here and there if you want to. Just wanted to give it a little bit of variation. Like I said, we're not too fussy today. We're just going to be enjoying it and just having fun painting. A little bit of that darker green. I feel this needs a little something. So we're all about layering like that. This one needs something, doesn't it? So we'll put a little bit more of that green colour, a little bit more of the buff colour and a little bit more of that. I'm going to take this colour all over this section. So what we've done here is we've really merged these colours together now. Look how lovely that looks. Not photorealistic, but I don't care. I think it looks lovely. I really like how these colours look. And you know, sometimes it's all about using, like I said, a little bit of artistic licence. So just working around. And what this does is it will separate that from that area there. So straight onto the paper. I've painted around that central vein. And just let that settle in like that. So we've got this kind of nice muted shade there. Back to the green colour. A little bit of that blue. And I'm going to add some detail here. So, so just using the tip of my brush. Just adding a little wiggle. And just filling that in. Same here. Like that. Cleaning my brush, patting it dry and just blending it in. Taking the same colour and again going on the outside edge of the stem just to give it a tiny bit more dimension. So right on the outside and this is a nice kind of looser style painting, something that you can do once you've done your drawing, um, you know even if you trace down the drawing Please do that and join in because, you know, that's what we're all about, having fun and just getting the paint onto the paper. But once you've done your drawing, this shouldn't take you too long to paint. So if you're looking for a fairly quick weekend project, this is a nice one to do. So I'm going to take this colour underneath that little bit there, just to enhance that and have a darker value. And again, taking this colour right down that stem. And because I'm feeling really, I don't know, I'm going to add a little bit of that uh, Rooter's Dream here, so I want to just make that stand out a bit more. So we're really, look how green it is when it goes on. So we're really kind of playing around with colours here and not being colour accurate. So it will change to this kind of purpley tone in a second. So clean, clean brush. My friends at Deep Deep Light, if you are watching this video, I think you've created a rather magical colour here. So congratulations, I've no idea what you've done. Um, when I first swatched these colours out, I thought I'd mis mislabeled them because this colour literally changed before my eyes and I thought, oh, I've made a mistake, but actually I hadn't mislabeled them. This magic happens. 
So if you do want to check out this colour, even if you don't buy any of the colours, I highly recommend that you do this because it's magical. I'm going back to my blender brush and I'm just going to wet the brush, take off the excess and then just blend it, just using water to drop in. And with that damp brush, just pat, just to merge some of those colours together. And you can, of course, take it into some of the stem if you want to. So we're going to be all loose and, and floaty today. And using that blender brush, I'm just going to soften out that edge a little bit. So I think we're going to call this finished. If you have enjoyed this video, please could I ask you to hit the like button underneath. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you've enjoyed my video and it lets more people see it. So I'd really appreciate that. Remember to join in. It's all about having fun with watercolour, expressing yourself and learning how to use those gorgeous colours. You don't have to use the colours from Deep Deep Light. But if you are in the market to treat yourself, I highly recommend them. Everything that I've used today from the materials and all that stuff, I will link in the description box underneath this video. Remember to like and subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed it. So let's just take a moment to appreciate the final painting. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.